So generally what I do, um, just in case you're not familiar with like my uh, style mm -hmm. of analysis, um, I pretty much just go through the game. Uh, for, since it's my first time watching you, I'm just going to watch for a bit uh, just to see mm -hmm. what your style's like and your skill yeah. level and uh, maybe some standout mistakes. And then we'll go back through in more detail and okay. we'll just go through each interaction. And generally, yeah. I focus on like the most impactful uh, moments. So, like the situations right. that come up a bunch, or the things that like cost you a stock because of one mistake. Those are the yeah. things I generally focus on, and I think that uh, lets you improve uh, as fast as possible. Yeah. Okay. And then I will screen share to you. Okay. Can you see my mouse cursor moving? Yep. Awesome. All right, let's get into it. Oh, well, I guess I should ask, uh, did you have like any general thoughts on this match or Sheik in general? Like anything um, you know is a problem for you? Needles mess me up. Needles. Like aerial needles. Okay. Um, and just like the Sheik shielding, I don't really know what to gotcha. do when there's shielding. Really. I, dude, I'm with you, and I think I cracked <laughs> it recently. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll see when, when that comes up. I'll go through everything. Yeah. Do you feel like you can edge guard her consistently? I've been starting to do the edge guard where it's like you normal get up and then like back air down tilt, mm -hmm. percent. And I yeah, that's been starting to work pretty well. Okay, cool. So we still have to work on it definitely, but I can uh, see if there's anything to add to that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that hitbox. <laughs> I know. Not too bad so far. Not yet. <laughs> so far. Okay. So I'm seeing a couple of like standard habits so far, so yeah. that's that's honestly good news because that just means um, it, it's stuff that like everyone does, and if you just cut that out of your game, you'll immediately uh, stop getting hit in certain scenarios. Right. Okay. I think we can uh, just start going through it. All right. And you said you can see the cursor, right? I forgot what you said. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good CC shine. Good back airs. Mm -hmm. So when Cheek is on the ledge, this is this is a uh, like a huge part of the game because. Um, a lot of your damage on Sheik is going to come from edge guards. Like you're going to okay. be hitting her off at low to mid percents, and this is where you want to get your damage. And it can be dangerous interacting with her by the ledge, but if you do it properly, it can be really hard for her. So one of the main options you'll see is Sheik ledge dash into F tilt. Um, if yeah. she does a really deep ledge dash and she tries to F tilt, the your you can actually space a back air and it will beat the up tilt beat the F tilt um, if, if she's doing a deep ledge dash because she gets less gallon. 
if she does a shorter ledge dash, then your back air will whiff, but uh, the F tilt will also whiff. So, okay. like, so you're at a pretty good spacing to do it here. So, like, just envision right. like her her deepest ledge yeah, dash yeah, on yeah. stage, and then space for that. And instead of doing this, you can see how, I mean, let me see. You might have reacted to her going above the ledge. Yeah, but yeah. in general, that's just a risky move to be jumping towards the corner. And even then, the backer is probably better. Yeah. Okay. okay, so this was the first habit I noticed was uh, the double jump. So um, there's really no reason to double jump here because, uh, I mean, the, the double jump is shorter, but you almost want to go high anyway if you're in the corner because anytime you're full hopping or yeah, in the future, you'll be full hopping. So when you're full yeah. hopping off this plat, uh, you're basically saying I'm either gonna drift to this top plat, just like keep going forward, or I'm gonna mm -hmm. drift back to the side plat. Because yeah. go going straight down, I guess could maybe work sometimes, but you're basically just hoping they don't do their aerial right. So you can see uh, she she's just going for this up air, and uh, Falco's full hop being super tall is often a hindrance but this is one of the scenarios where it's actually beneficial because she can't react to that jump and hit it so you really want to yeah, abuse the height of the full hop and you also don't okay. want to be burning your double jump in a situation where now you're if you get hit off stage you're potentially losing a sock right because you don't have yeah. your main recovery tool so luckily he dropped the combo there but you could see how that could have been disastrous for sure so, this is an edge guard. Let's see. So, the first thing you want to keep in mind when you're edge guarding Sheik, you want to space a back air here uh, in whatever way you can, or, or even just threaten any hitbox, just so she can't uh, do. So, like, see how she does this fair? Or she also mm -hmm. could have grabbed a ledge. You want to prevent this stuff where she's double jumping towards the ledge. So, you can imagine. Uh, I'll rewind in a sec, but imagine you were on the ledge and you were doing a back air here and just try and visualize how she would have had to space around that differently. So yeah. let's say you're on ledge now, right? Like you could have done it quicker and just yeah. grab ledge. And then as she's doing this double jump, you're doing a ledge hop back air. And your goal isn't right. even to hit her. It's just to protect this space. So maybe she does the double jump, but she realizes you're going to do the back air. So she's double jumping straight up or she's double jumping okay. lower. Um, mm -hmm. and, and both of those mean now she's being forced to do the up B. And that's what you want out of her edge guard. If you can force her to do the up B, then you have a, a easy rinse and repeat. Right. So you can see like as soon as you grabbed it late, now it's sort of awkward. You, you could have shined here. That would have been good. Um, but that's a little trickier. Yeah. And then, and then you can see that also messed up your, in, your ledge grab invol timing. Because now, like, you have to do this option to avoid the poof. Um, right. And yeah, even yeah. with the roll, it doesn't cover it. Okay, and we see that Nair again into the corner, right? So she, yep. she's in the corner. And you have the right idea of, like, wanting to hit her off, and you realize she's going to do the ledge dash. And giving up the space can be deceptive. So, like, that's not entirely terrible to do, like, a dash way, make her think she can ledge dash on, and then jump back with a back air. Oh, I didn't... I was, had to deafen for a second. Oh, sorry. Um, so I was saying, uh, you do this snare into the corner again, right? Uh-huh. And, like, the retreating, honestly, isn't bad. The laser is fine. Uh, like, going towards center stage to bait the ledge dash can be good. And that, But instead of this, you want to do, like, a backflip back air uh, to zone. Or another thing uh, you can often do is use the side plat and do, like, short hop oh. drop through or run off drop through. Or you can even do runoff um, if you don't want to. You don't want to get too predictable with the back air. So if they start catching on, you can do runoff turnaround laser. Laser, yeah. So you have a lot of different ways to pressure her coming off the ledge, and she she doesn't okay. really have any hitboxes aside from ledge dash F tilt. It's not like Marth where he can ledge hop on deep and fair right here, right? Like, cause it, if she fares, it probably like trades with the back air. Right? Well, her fair just can't reach that far on stage. Remember, you're standing okay. like. Kind of like outside of the side plat, she I think she can maybe get like here, but her drift is just way worse. Plus she doesn't have a yeah. sword, so 
um, when you see it in practice or if you want to test it yourself like pick chic and just see how deep you can get the fair I think sometimes mm -hmm. uh, doing stuff like that like using their character for a, a second uh, can make you realize like how limited they actually are off the ledge right but the, the nair works out and then uh, I guess that was an up tilt probably yeah I so, so. I, I like this laser F tilt great challenge or uh, just like protecting yourself and threatening to poker off, I do that a lot versus Sheik. And it's safe, yeah. so that's the main thing. Um, after this, I like to do, um, you can do like a backflip bear. That's that's something I like to do a lot in this matchup is uh, after this F tilt, you don't really have time to like do uh, other stuff right in her face because she could wave dash forward F tilt. So I'll do like dash away back air immediately. Or you can dash away okay. and laser. So, j right. just keeping in mind that you don't you don't want to just stand there and get hit by wave dash forward F tilt or down tilt or grab, right? Yeah. Which I think you do. You wave dash, which is fine, and that gives you a laser. And now you have her own side plat. So this will be another common scenario that'll come up probably. Okay. So that's actually good on this stage. <laughs> yeah. Boom, and there you see the back air. Uh, yeah. A little closer than you probably should be, but... Oh, no, she was jumping, sorry. She wasn't on ledge, so it's okay to be closer. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, do you have uh, invul strats? Do you have, like, any set game plans when you're respawning or when they're respawning? <sighs> not really, I mean... Okay. No, not really. I, I just mentioned it plot, because but... even having one or two simple like game plans to fall back on can really make your uh, stocks more consistent because like getting the lead is great in melee but mm -hmm. what you might experience a lot is like they come down with the invul and then they just kill you right away and then it feels like you, you didn't really earn the first stock right because they even yeah. it up and unlike uh, so unlike Falco most characters don't just immediately die that way right. so like if if this position was reversed, like you took a, if Sheik took your first stock and you're respawning and she's at 54, you're almost never gonna like drop down, hit her, and then kill her off of it, because she can do Shino stall, Marth can ledge stall, so and like Puff and Peach right. can just float off stage, so, um, and Fox is just crazy fast. <laughs> uh, Falcon is like a little more limited, but he's also fast. So Falco is kind of unique in the sense that. Um, I think he's the most vulnerable person during this invul state. So holding on to yeah. these stocks is crucial. And the first thing you want to keep in mind, Sheik is facing left. So if she's going to drop through with an aerial, it's going to be back air. So right. you have to weigh the risks of each side. So I'd say at this percent, um, I, I'd prefer to say on this side because if she drops down with a fair, it's easier to avoid the fair even though it kills better. Whereas like the back air has more range and it's harder to avoid. Yeah. But it's not a big difference for Sheik. It'll be a much bigger difference for like Fox and Marth. Where like I was gonna say Marth probably is a bigger difference. Yeah, being behind Marth, like I'll just stand on the ground here and shield, and Marth comes down and he like can't challenge it very well. Um, right. And then like it's a lot of Marths will like drop down and either like if they do a back air, that's just super laggy. And if they drop down to do like reverse fair then I just buffer a full hop out of the shield stun. And it's really hard for him to chase that. And then yeah. similarly for Fox, um, or, or Falco, honestly, like maybe as a Falco, you're used to doing like the wave land off bear. Um, so if you're on this side, obviously you'd, you'd rather be on this side against the Falco, because if he mm -hmm. wave lands off right away or drops down, he's not going to be back airing you in the face where you're going to die. So just something to think about with your respawn yeah. involved. Okay, so this was the other habit I noticed. Uh, aerial's out of shield. It's really common um, to, uh, like you, when anyone attacks your shield and you feel like you did a good job of blocking it, and then you immediately try to counterattack out of it. So yeah. you're gonna wanna shift into a, a different perspective of like, if you shield something successfully, or in this case you didn't even shield it, but she whiffed an attack, 
unless mm-hmm. you know you can get the punish, you, you don't want to be reaching with things like this because you can see, like, he's just walking away because he literally has played a million Falcos that do this dare out of shield, right? Or same right. with back air out of shield. The auto cancel back air is a big bad habit. Um, tons of Falcos mm-hmm. have it. I, I definitely do it a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I've cut it out in the past, like, two months or maybe a little longer than that. But uh, I don't know if you saw Ginger's video on auto cancel back air. But uh, I can't. Re- I don't think so. It, it's basically just why like auto cancel back air is almost never good. Um, okay. But yeah, we, we can look for more instances of those. Okay. So do you know if you meant to do this F smash? Um. I guess you could have been trying to whiff punish yeah, that. Yeah, I probably did. I okay. probably did. Yeah, I would just say um, definitely pay attention to percents and have, mm-hmm. like, not just pay attention, but make sure that's influencing your decision um, mm-hmm. at every point in the game. So, Sheikah Tony 2, obviously, an F Smash, even if you hit it, it's not helping you much, right? Yeah. You'd much rather, e- even, it sounds like way worse, but even just grabbing her, right? Get a grab up throw and then shark, that's going to be mm-hmm. about the same percent as a. Uh, as an F smash, but there's no risk and actually higher reward because if you up throw and then like maybe she does something bad, uses her double jump, or you just hit her with a good sharking move, that could turn into a full fledged combo. This is yeah. I it's actually funny because this actually might be good if it hits because it might reverse. I feel like she oh, yeah. if it hit she might have gotten close, sent but... like up here, but yeah, normally yeah, yeah. it's just gonna send her away. And also, a fun little detail about F Smash is um, most moves when they clank, they like stop right away. But for Falco and Fox, F Smash is actually isn't the case. So see how the attack <laughs> keeps going, and you get screwed. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. So it, if you like ever F Smash trade with Fox's up smash, his up smash stops right away, and your F Smash keeps going, and you just have to watch yourself get up smashed again. <laughs> it's terrible. All right, so let's see what your respawn is. Um, like I said, you can't do much for she. Oh, lol. That's what you get. <laughs> okay, so now we're fighting by the ledge probably a little too much. Uh, so I would definitely grab ledge. Maybe you even meant... Oh, you did, okay. And then um, because of this percent, you kind of have two different approaches. You can go for the back air um, just to send her off. I think that's probably the, the best way to go. You can do regular get up shine, or you can go for yeah. like a harder combo with like ledge hop down air. So the ledge hop down air, I think the the back air could be slid off at this percent anyway, but the, the down air is more likely to be slid off. Um, so right. all three of those are good though. So uh, I guess you just reacted late. If you feel like you're reacting late, um, it's probably because you grabbed ledge late. Let me see if that was the case. Yeah, I did grab. I yeah, did so grab you like has you either hesitated or messed up, and then uh-huh. so as soon as you see that, um, if you feel like you flubbed by the ledge, you can always uh, bail out with like wave land on the side plat, or or even just like rising mm-hmm. aerial. So like maybe notice that you messed up, and it's just like okay, if she goes to the ledge, whatever. I, I wanted to cover ledge, but I kind of messed up or I didn't have time. So you can do like a ledge hop down air onto side plat. Maybe she gets popped up, and if she doesn't, it's not the end of the world. But you yeah. don't want to get reversed on your own edge guard. It's the main thing. Okay, that's the second time you did that up smash. So now I'm wondering if it's on purpose. Actually, no. It well, still looks like an up tilt. <laughs> yeah, that one was probably an up tilt. Okay, I would say even if it isn't up tilt, um, like if this one's debatable because. Up tilt can poke here. I, I don't right. know if it would have hit, but um, just be uh, aware that a lot of players will wait on the side plat. They'll wait for the up tilt because that's like the the most predictable option. So if you okay. want an alternative, you can do like a back air and then drift to the right, just so it's safe. Yeah. So you're still challenging, and you can honestly shield poke she um, a decent amount of the time, even though she has a really good shield. Her legs are vulnerable if you space it. Yeah. Oh, another F smash. 
That one's a little better because you're on side plat or a top plat. Nothing too bad can happen, but um, to me that says like you're a little too eager to get the kill. Yeah, that, that sounds right. And like you, it was also on a whiff punish attempt. Both, both times you F smashed, you were trying to whiff punish Sheik, but you're not really going to be able to F smash whiff punish. Yeah. Like e even doing like a jump cancel grab, which is one of your faster options, that's still really hard. Nice. See, he didn't know. <laughs> I I always shake my head. I don't know. So many good players like don't think about how you could drop down back air here, because she could yeah, be doing it, the same mix up but over here. Often. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, why are you ever on the right side of the stage? <laughs> but, uh, okay. So this. Short I don't know why up there. <laughs> well, the the issue was actually the the double jump one. So if you had done a ledge stall here, um. Because you basically want to do the, the regular get up so that it hogs if she goes to ledge. That's like the timing you have in mind. Because you grabbed plenty yeah. late. Like you grabbed, like the grab ring is still there from the initial grab it while she's poofing. Right. So your, your two priorities are one, do the regular get up before the poof hits you. And if that's not a threat, then you want to do it as late as possible so that you're hogging. Not, not as late as possible. Yeah. You want to do it late enough to hog, and then that should leave you mm -hmm. with enough yeah. time to cover everything else. Yeah. So you can see if you had done that, then you're getting like a jump shine. Um, if, if you play Sheiks that do the ground tech, the Amsa tech, um, right. it's good to do like regular get up into jump shine bear. That's a really good go to option yeah. if you have Sheiks that are doing the ground tech, because it's becoming more and more common. But e sure. even just like a back air, or you could jump shine waveland and go for a kill off the top. But I would back air here because I just want to get her back off stage. She's at at seventy seven. Right, yeah. She's getting sent far enough that you're just gonna rinse and repeat edge guard her. So you can see like this matchup might feel tough sometimes, but if you start converting these situations where she's at mid percent and potentially dying, it's almost like you're gimping her. Like it feels really weird yeah. to say, but. You, you'll just edge guard her sense. four times, and you'll be like, wow, I actually was not at risk of getting hit that entire time. Okay. So th did you see what happened that that time? Or like why you got grabbed here? It was just a bad dare. It was not only a bad dare, it was a bad dare out of your double jump. Right? So this is the same double jump you did before where you yeah. double jump from side plat. Um, and... I think similar to the out of shield option where like when you were shielding you were going for the down air out of shield instead of just wave dashing towards center and resetting. I think this is another situation where when you're on the side plat you're in the weak scenario. Like mm -hmm. um, yeah, when you're up above sheet your priority is to reset. So you're looking for maybe like a drop down laser to get laser control or to like dash chance and then potentially run off with something that won't get punished or even go to top plat so those are that's what you should be looking for and you did pull this back so it's not the worst thing in the world but you could see how what what was she doing the entire time literally she's just waiting for you to do something bad yeah right? so I, I guess she was like kind of being tricky with her movement but they're always going to be doing like dash chance wave dash stuff um mm -hmm. If you want a mix-up to this, you can do wave land back. You'll sometimes still okay, get boost yeah. grabbed, but if you watch old school West Ball's videos, since he like over relied on double jump mix-ups, but at the same time that made him really good at them. So if you're going to be right. doing double jumps, definitely look to West Balls to figure out how okay. to do this. It's primarily just coming down with laser, not very good versus sheet because she low profiles under it. Coming down with aerials drifting in, drifting back, and then coming down with the waveland. And you can even waveland towards sometimes. Because like some people yeah. will space here uh, to whiff punish something, and then you waveland towards shine. So those are your yeah. general mix-ups, but overall not advisable to do this in the first place. Okay, so when you're getting tech chase, um, have you ever tried the slight DI on top of her? I try and, well, I, I can never get it. I try and just, like, go back a tiny bit, and right. I just so, go back too much. Right, so the trick to doing Slight DI is actually not to 
to tilt the stick, you want to press fully up or down and angle your stick that way. So like if you, uh, let me, I'll just, this is dumb. If, I, if you do that angle on your control stick, <laughs> the, the backslash or uh, the oh, forward yeah. slash, like if you do a slash or where you're like going slight up, I mean, do you have notches? I do. I, okay. I so if nice you use the upward, upward notch on either side towards yeah. her, then you'll get a slight angle. And you, not, you might need to adjust that, like go slightly further than the notch, uh, depending right. on your percent. But going along the gate that way makes it, first of all, it makes it way easier to actually do it without like missing the tilt, right? And then secondly, okay. it makes it easier to control like how far you're going. So if you can do that, it makes it so much harder for Sheiks. And, and do I always want to go behind or do I have to go You want to make it as ambiguous as possible. Okay. Um, now there, there's some like meta level knowledge where like you actually want to aim behind but make it ambiguous, right? Because sheiks are less likely to turn around than they are to not turn around. Generally yeah. that's what I find. Um, but you can just play around with it and you'll get a feel for what sheiks are covering. Um, and you'll get to a point where like you're doing the slight the eye tech in place and you do it like three times and then they start reading with up smash and then you do the slight the eye and then you're tech rolling. And they're like, God yep. damn it, I finally caught all it. <laughs> and uh, very few Falcos are using it. So, like, like I have Sheiks tell me all the time, no one ever does a slight DI versus them. So definitely incorporate that, and you will find you're getting tech checks way less. Okay. And you can also do miss tech. So um, yeah. it's a little less common that I do miss tech if I'm slight di Um But it is something that could be a little tricky. Like, maybe they don't know which way to jab. I think her jab right. will probably usually hit both sides anyway, but uh, maybe not. Or maybe they'll just panic. Uh, and one last thing is, let's say you're all the way on the left side of the stage, and they're, they're used to you doing the slight DI. So like, let's say she's you're doing the slight DI here. She's A lot of sheiks will rely on the wave dash back, right, to, to grab it more consistently. Right. Yeah. If they wave dash back, it's very hard for them to wave dash back at a spacing that will still allow them to get tech roll away. So you can do the slight DI. If they're a wave dash back style chic, then you re, uh, okay. either react or like predict it and tech roll away, and their boost grab will often come up short. So those are just some yeah. ideas. You can mess around with it. There's a lot of different tricks you can do to make it much harder yeah. for them. Because even someone as good as like Spark says this is like basically impossible to cover. It's like I have to do yeah. like slight, slight wave dash back, and like, and they're trying to reaction tech chase at the same time, right? And then right. you tech a place, spot dodge shine them on a slight di, and they just it, it's really hard for them. Well, is spot dodge shine better or is just get up shine better? Uh, I actually think spot dodge shine is better, which is okay. like, it's probably like counterintuitive to say that, but it's because uh, Falco shine is so easy to space around that. I don't know if you've played a sheik again, oh, yeah. played against a sheik that, that does sense. that, but they'll just wait for the tech and play shine and still get the grab. Yeah. Um, so if they, you kind of have to like pay attention to their habits and uh, adjust accordingly. Um, some sheiks will space around the shine every time, and they actually won't even go for the, the the correct reaction. And some sheiks will not space around, and then you you get a better punish if you do um, the shot. Or it's not that you get a better punish because. If they whiff the grab when you spot dodge, or if you shine when they're going for the grab, it's the same punish. But the difference yeah. would be if you spot dodge and they just waited, then you're getting punished. Whereas if they're just waiting, uh, for if they're waiting for a spot dodge and you shine, wave dash away or whatever, you're going to be more safe. So that True. that's the trade off you have to look at. Okay. Oh, that sucks. No, that was just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're lead stalling, which is fine, but you have to be able to ledge dash. But then that happens. Yeah. yeah. So you have to be, first of all, you don't want to be doing it repeatedly. You want to be waiting to time it because you want to ledge okay. grab as soon as she's within threat range, right? There's no point in grabbing the ledge um, at this timing where, uh, like, you're not timing it relative to when she's going to get here. So I'd, you should be grabbing it right now, right? But you're actually releasing yeah. it now, and that's where your problem was. 
So I okay. think I, this is how I play a lot of uh, respawn mixups. I'll just grab ledge and I can ledge dash, or waveland on mm -hmm. side plat. Like do the regular ledge options, but you have to be timing the initial one because every frame of this invul counts for Sheik. Like she's trying to make it all count, and if you're just gonna give her one free opportunity here, even if you did a perfect stall, uh, which you shouldn't be relying on. You shouldn't rely on the perfect frame perfect stall. Yeah. Even if she whiffs this down smash here, she still has invol left over after. So you, you don't want to let her get that for free. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Actually, we should look at your respawn. So you do the drop down back air again. Mm -hmm. Probably reasonable. I think she does the dash. Uh, okay, yeah. So you probably could have reacted that she wasn't there at that point. Yeah. Right. Uh, and that's just a, a matter of like paying attention to what she's doing while you're coming back because you're not doing anything until you're actionable up there. True. Okay. So, if you're gonna do the wake up shine, I think you just need to like assume it will hit, right? Because if it's not hitting, then uh, I mean, I mean, you can just shine and then wave dash, whether it hits or not. Right. So I think that should be your mentality, especially when she's shielding here. Uh, you might like sh shine or shield and then wave to shine away. Um, you don't want to kind of like do this double jump, because like even when it hits, it's not that good. And then if it whiffed it would be even worse. Like, imagine yeah. she kept shielding, yeah. and now you're double jumping above her. Um, and then, uh, in that instance, I think uh, your priority should be establishing laser control. So you can see, like, you're actionable on the ground, she's in the air, and not, she. even if she's landing on side plat, like, you can think, okay, I want laser control before I, like, engage with her again. But it seems like right. you just wanted to engage right away and you have no setup whatsoever. Like, she has no reason not to just retreat and grab this, or like F tilt you. Like, she doesn't yeah. feel any threat of a laser mix up. So a good thing to fall back on is Falco. If you're like not sure what to pay attention to in neutral and you feel like you're kind of lost, throw out a laser and try and establish laser mix ups. Because there are very simple laser mix ups you can learn for every matchup. So like, maybe you laser chic in she takes a laser and uh, maybe she wants to do take laser F tilt. Well, you can play around take laser F tilt. What's harder to do is play around raw F tilt in neutral when there's no like significant timing indication, right? Right. She could do it at any point because there's no laser uh, pressure in her. Yeah. And that, that kind of is what happened there. Like she almost grabbed you for this. Right. Real fast. And then this is the shield you said you were struggling with. So what I do for a shield, I mean, this one's maybe not the best example because it looked like you missed your L cancel and could have shined, or like you, you barely missed the shine. But let's say you mm -hmm. knew she was gonna get her shield up in time. I would just shine grab here. And this is what I've been doing the past couple weeks. Um, not even that long, but it, I, it's something I knew I should have been doing a long time ago. And I'm finally yeah. like committing to it where I'll just spam it. I even did today versus Plup in the crew battle, and just like every shine grab just hits. So because these sheiks are always waiting okay. for the shine, and then they want to move after. So maybe they'll roll and it won't hit, but uh, then the other option I like to add in, if I don't want to shine grab, I'll do wave shine away. So the, the okay. idea behind wave shine away is that it, uh, it gets you out of her shield out of, sorry, it gets you out of her shield Sorry. It gets you out of her <laughs> attack out of shield range immediately. So like if she shield grabs, I mean Marth will actually shield grab it, you have to wave shine through him. But for Sheik you can usually wave shine away and she can't shield grab, she can't nair you. So you're getting yeah. into a safe space. And if she does any of those options, you're positioned in a way where you can react and you're also actionable. So the thing, I, right. I used to do the fadeaway aerial that you do here but what is the problem with this? She's literally actionable. Let's see when she is. She's actionable right now. You're still in the friggin' air, and she's like yeah. able to start wave dashing towards you. 
So maybe you, if you think back, you might realize that this is true, but when you're doing these arrows, you almost feel afraid after they shield it, right? Like for you, sure, you, yeah. you want them to shield grab, but they have no reason to shield grab. They, they're waiting for the, the pressure to finish so they can get a free escape. Because mm -hmm. uh, the characters that abuse shield uh, the best are the ones that are waiting for your opening that, that you give them. So if you're just gonna give them an opening, they're just gonna wait every time. Why would the Sheik ever do an attack after your shine? If you're gonna do fade away aerial, or if you're gonna do shine double jump maybe, uh, whatever you're doing after your shines, if it's not something that she has to be immediately scared of, she's never gonna do anything preemptively. Yeah. So uh, definitely just try to replace this with wave shine away, and then also add in shine grabs. Just uh, you almost want to just spam shine grab, just to just to convince yourself that like it actually will work, because I think a lot of the reason Falcons don't use it is because they actually don't believe you can just shine grab over and over, but you you really can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and then uh, you can see like she doesn't even wave dash. She wave lands. You're still in lag here. Let's well, just like. This was your shield pressure sequence. You had her cornered, and now mm -hmm. you're in pressure. Like, I don't even know if you're actionable. You are for a few frames. So you try and turn around up tilt, I guess. Yeah. Not not a terrible idea, but you just didn't, didn't even not. have the frames. Yeah. So that just hopefully highlights how bad that retreating aerial is. Okay. Um, if you... So the one exception I'll say is, like, if Sheik is, like, 150%, and you, you mm -hmm. want to do the retreating aerial to poke her or like hit her, catch her moving out of shield so she dies. If it's an option where it's literally going to kill, um, it's a little more understandable. So if you're going to do it then, at least like delay the, the aerial a little and like do a nail right, instead. Like a little later. Yeah, you can delay it a little. You still want to do it fast enough that it beats like a nair out of shield. But if you do shine backflip, it's generally going to be safe to out of shield options until you can get your nair out. So maybe okay. do it at like the peak of your jump, kind of. Yeah. Um, and it's a little safer, but it's still, even if you do that uh, like mid height nair and you're landing, and even with the fast fall, uh, she can still wave dash jab you and like really put some pressure on you out of your own shield pressure sequence, which obvious, obviously isn't desirable. And then that was just the game. Yeah. Only thing I would add to the end here is uh, maybe get in the habit of holding seasick down here. Sometimes you slide off, especially for Sheik. If she's doing dash attack, okay. F tilt, it feels really weird at first because you're just like, so you're probably used to DI in a way. So all you have to do is add in the seasick down. And it'll feel weird because yeah, you're not, uh, you don't want to OMS attack, which uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people OMS attack here and then they die. Um, so you just want to hold C6 down and you'll slide off the ledge versus a lot of this stuff. Probably this, I think. I don't know the exact percent. But but even if even if you're too high percent to slide off, well, you were doing the DI way anyways. So the C6 down right. doesn't hurt you at all. Just add CI down then. Yeah. Uh, did you have another game? Because that one, I felt like you um, kind of died fast. If you don't, we can uh, look at like a YouTube video of other Falcos versus Sheik. I do, but I played a lot worse. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of um, learning melee is just cutting out the bad stuff that uh, that that you kind of learn because you don't know what else to do. So, yeah. totally normal to have bad games. Is this the second game versus Kubi? That is versus Swayzo. No, oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah, I know him. I haven't played Kubi. I think I've played Swayzo. Swayzo messed me up. <laughs> It'll happen. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I have a feeling. Uh, just keep an eye out for like similar things from the last game. I'll try and point them out. Yeah. Um, just because uh, that's another interesting thing about doing analysis is that uh, you, you'll see the same issues crop up in like every VOD versus the same character or even versus different characters. So like if I watch you play a Marth, 
I bet you do similar stuff like attack out of shield. So yeah, look for sure. look in your other matchups for when you're doing these same things. But it it especially comes up versus Sheik, obviously. It, oh, I mean, also it's here. for Sheik, what do you think for counter picks? Because I just counter pick FD. Uh, I think FD is probably the best. Here, I can just give you my uh, stage preferences. Okay. So I'd say FD Pokemon because it's like pretty similar yeah. to FD. I do like Yoshi's a lot. So there was a point where I was picking Yoshi's over FD and Pokemon. Um, I I'm, oh, wow. I changed my counter picks a lot based on the player. So some people will like always go to the same stage no matter how they play. I like to change it up more, and also mm -hmm. change it up based on like how I'm playing. And I'm also not afraid to just pick a different stage to. Maybe we strike the Yoshis, and I'm just like, oh, they let me strike the Yoshis, and I just get destroyed. <laughs> I might actually just go Dreamland. Um, I think Dreamland is underrated. Um, and for a while, I was going Battlefield because I was like, I actually don't mind Battlefield, but now I kind of oh. have started minding it more. Yeah. Uh, let me think. I never go to Battlefield. Yeah, I think Battlefield's probably my least favorite now. It's probably that. Um, it would depend yeah. on if you're not comfortable on FOD. I definitely recommend tech skill practicing on FOD because I think a lot of players just sense. auto strike FOD because they don't like it. So if you can yeah, become one I... of those players that's comfortable on it, you'll you'll have an edge when you strike because that's, people will just strike that's it. That's kind of what I thought too, right? I was like, I, I don't like FOD. If I have nothing to strike, I'll just strike FOD. Yeah. But I was looking at like one of the slippy stats things <laughs> and my highest win rate is on FOD. Yeah. So I was like, huh. That's that just seems feels weird because it's like just it. one of those things people do automatically, because yeah. they just. I think a lot of people don't even dislike the stage, because if you think about it, you can't have everyone disliking the stage. Like some people have to be doing good on it. Mm -hmm. But what I think it is is, uh, it's because of how it's different from the other stages. People are uncomfortable on it, so when it comes For to sure. tournament. Even if you ask them their odds on FOD and they said, oh, I probably have like a 60% chance of winning. But then it comes down to tournament and they say, mm, I don't want to go to FOD though because the platforms are scary because I'm not comfortable. Yeah. And it's like, they might blame randomness, but I think that is rarely a good excuse. Right, I mean, like you can use it, you know, the only time it's really going to be the randomness affecting you is if it's like you do the tech roll or something and the platform comes up and right like up i mean you can usually see them coming it's it's rare that yeah. they pop up right at the worst time i mean sometimes they do but even then i when i see it no side plat i just assume it's coming up any second now and play around it yeah. and yeah, then i'll yeah. see my i'll be playing around it my opponent won't be they'll get messed up by it i punish them and then they're like god you got so lucky i'm just like uh okay <laughs> i guess i got lucky uh-huh so FD is a good uh, good stage to analyze for this matchup because, I mean, Sheik has a lot of good platform stuff that we'll need to go over, and unfortunately mm -hmm. there wasn't too much in the first game. Like usually Sheiks rely heavily on side plat and like yeah, like the needles you mentioned didn't come up at all, right? The the side yeah, plat I think needles. Yeah, has more needles. Okay, well, so he's probably he's doing like full hop needles or grounded needles. Mm -hmm. Um. If he's getting a full stack, you just have to pay attention and just shield it. Um, sometimes I'll like short hop over it and like maybe I get clipped by one or two needles, but at least I don't need the full percent. Yeah. That can be like a less committal way. Because uh, you don't want to get in a position where like you're shielding for the needles because you see them charging and then they cancel and boost grab you. But yeah. I think most of that is reactable. You just have to be really keen to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Okay, do you hate getting power shielded? <laughs> I mean, I guess everyone oh, does. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but, um, absolutely. do you have, like, a game plan for when you do get power shielded, or do you sort of, like, spam stuff? I just take it. <laughs> okay. So, if you watch Mango, what he does most of the time is dash back out of it. So, you, okay. you can see, like, you got hit by the laser... But most characters, I mean, unless it's like Fox doing a running power shield up smash or something, most characters are literally incapable of punishing you out of it. So that just means you're playing neutral. But be, what happens yeah. is Falcos get hit by the power shield and then they shield like you did. 
Um, well, I think you shield it right before that jump. So they're like not reacting to this, to the power, to the power shield in the first place, and they either do like bad tech skill because they're like trying to do something else, or they get hit and they panic and shield, maybe like spot up right. or whatever. So like you're basically just getting hit by a power, hit by a laser at this distance, where she can't do anything, and you're basically saying, I don't want to play neutral. Ah, so <laughs> if you if you get in the habit of taking the power shield laser and dashing back or even approaching out of it um like the same way you would in the falco ditto like if someone laser yeah. well i mean maybe maybe you struggle in the falco ditto that's also common where like you get hit by a laser in the falco ditto and you just panic and scream uh well, i kind of just try and laser back usually okay so yeah it, you can think of it as if you got hit by another falco where like yeah. the sheik is not gonna she can't even shuffle at you like a falco could right so Mm -hmm. You're getting hit by this laser, just dash chance and maybe dash back and shoot another one. And then you also want to incorporate the low laser into high laser to short hop over the power shields. Especially yeah. at the beginning of games like these, almost everyone's looking for the power shield. And it's hard to see, so it's better to shoot the low one and then short hop over. And that way, if, it, if they do power shield, they, they can't know like what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, uh, so this is sort of going back to the percent awareness we talked about before, where you hit this shine, you so she at zero, unless she fooled the eyes, if she does a fooled the eye, you can actually wave shine and down air her, short hop down air, uh, that's something mm -hmm. most people don't know. So you're hitting the shine, you want to wave shine forwards towards her, basically every time, versus every character, okay. you're almost always wave shining towards. Yeah. So. Make that way shine forward automatic. And then you see her up here and like this aerial's never going to convert to anything. Even at like 40, this is hard pressed to convert to anything. So what you right. should be doing instead is looking for sharking opportunities. So if you can catch her with an up tilt or a preemptive mm -hmm. up air, uh, or you can, if you're like not confident where she's gonna drift or if she's gonna come down with a fair and you're like worried you don't have time, you can let her land and space around it on the ground and maybe either pressure her landing with an aerial or what's m easier most of the time is to just pressure her landing with a laser and then get her in another yeah. laser mix-up on the ground. So we'll see if that comes up again. Because you can see, like, clearly this, like, is just not safe at all. Yeah. And the Sheik actually didn't even handle it right. Swayzo could have just grabbed you. Like, if you look at when he, du when he jumped... Or he didn't, if he didn't jump Like, there. if he just continues to fall to the ground, you can't do anything because you just double jump dared. So you're yeah. not actionable. I don't think you can even, like, up B. <laughs> like, you're actually just in the dare lag the entire time, and he could grab you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we see another power shield. So maybe that's an issue this game. Where you... Yeah, that's it. This one, so you do the short hop over. So this is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you can see, like, what could she could really have the, done? She could have, like, stayed grounded and played played the mix-up, but probably not close enough to counter this. Um, and if you can react to this, reacting to this is kind of like reacting to the fox full hop, um, and you can up tilt yeah. it. So if you see Sheik's jumping over you ever, look for up tilt or like dash way back air to be safe. Yeah. Uh, or even you could dash through back air. All those are fine. But again, you're like, mm -hmm. your frame of mind is like, how do I shark her? Uh, let's see what, right. or what you did was also fine though. This that was the other option we talked about, right? Where you see her and you're like, oh, I can't really punish this. I see sh she's throwing out a back air. I didn't anti air it. Let me pounce on her after she lands. Boom. Mm -hmm. So now you have a laser mix up. So, uh, what are the main options do you think sheiks like to use in this scenario? Like, if you're a sheik, uh, what are you doing here? Probably wave dash, board. Grab her F tilt. Is right. That thing. And why do you want to do right those out. options? Uh, they're like the best punishes, and it's like perfect range for it. Yeah, and it also beats another laser, right? So okay. that, was, that was a perfect answer, though. Uh, you're exactly right that like it gives her the best punish. And it's also, she's at 20, it's still fairly low risk for her. Mm -hmm. And like the, the Sheik's frame of mind is like they want to get you out of crouch cancel as soon as possible. 
So any grab scenario at these lower percents are huge for her. For sure. Uh, and like wave dash forward F tilt could be CC'd, but Falco's CC shine isn't the best cause, just because of the range. So mm -hmm. I find Sheik's will be down to like wave dash forward F tilt or up tilt and then convert that into a grab, right? Because yeah. like, especially if you do another laser and you get caught in the air by an F tilt, you're gonna get grabbed. Perfect. So that's definitely what she's looking for. Um, some other options she might do, like short hop out of shield and like try to zone with fair. But you can see that if you do another laser and she's jumping, she's gonna be landing at that and then she's susceptible to laser into an air. So that's why you generally won't see that um, unless they have another thing in mind. Like maybe they think you're going to approach, yeah. which is what Swayzer does. So you can see, and he does a full hop one. So he's avoiding that uh, laser if you had done mm -hmm. another one. Uh, so you can see that. But the problem with this as Sheik is it's so reactable. So again, right. you could like get under her and shine. You could like run under CC shine, wave dash forward up tilt, um, or you can just back off like barely at all and just laser again. So this isn't doing anything for Sheik unless you're running into it. Which unfortunately okay. I think you do. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see how like, um, and this is why I say prioritize laser mix-ups. So like, if you're thinking of this as a laser mix-up, and then thinking of this also as a laser mix-up. So like, each laser is a mix-up, and you you need to be paying attention to how she's handling them. So if you were yeah. thinking of this as a specific instance, like, okay, I'm gonna laser, she's gonna do something, and then I'm gonna counter what she does. If you see this very easy to react to what's your counter to it like what what do you think is uh, oh well i guess i just went I, through those but yeah i mean i probably in my mind i say wave dash up tilt yeah i like wave dash up tilt especially at 20. um yeah uh short hop up air can also be kind of cool it can mm -hmm. it can work um you just have to make sure you're hitting that before fair comes out so you can see she's fairing because she's just so vulnerable but also important to note this uh, fair is auto canceling. So if you're gonna think about whiff punishing, you want to take that into account. But you're you're generally not gonna be able to whiff punish Sheik with anything but laser. Like sometimes you can yeah. whiff punish with grab. So like if she whiffs, maybe you can read a grab. But uh, uh, as far as like short hop downering, that it's really hard. Uh, that makes sense. Okay, so we see that again where you you get the shine here, and uh, you just double jump out of it. Whereas if you're wave shining forward here, make make that your default. If you wave shine forward here, okay. you're getting a nice up air, or like worst case scenario, you do like shine back air, right? Just to build some damage. Yep. Um, but instead you only get the laser, and now you're like challenging the sphere again. Mm -hmm. So even though this laser hit her in the air, you can see it's still like a laser mix up in, in the sense that like you're landing, you can see like all she has is drop fair and two different drifts or like Right. She has like this cone uh, that she can drift in. That's her like threat range. And That's you're insane. standing right into it. So <laughs> yeah. you either need to be like under her where she doesn't have a threat. Like she can't really down air um, mm -hmm. as like a threat to if you're going to be up tilting. Or even if you're like shielding under her, like it's still hard for her to deal with. Uh, but behind her where she can back air and in front of her where she can fare. Uh, those are the danger zones. So okay. if you find yourself in those and you can't get under her, then you're definitely focusing on retreating and shooting another laser or like yeah. dash dancing and threatening her. Okay, wait, let me see what happened. Okay, this is the... I don't know how many times you did it before. I know you did it at least once. Uh, this is where you, you're hesitating on the ledge. Um, so yeah. I don't know, maybe you thought like, even at this range, like you can just do something, but you can see like with no invul, like you're really susceptible to these. So mm -hmm. if you ever, you should practice doing an immediate option, like no matter what. And even if that immediate okay. option is just to fire stall, that's better than hanging on ledge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or even like you could have just done like regular get up even. Probably wouldn't have been that bad if you if you're not comfortable mm -hmm. but with ledge dashing. Yeah. Um I mean Mango 
doesn't really ledge dash that much. So I think it's totally possible to play uh, Falco in a way where you're not like ledge dashing all the time. But I, I'm I like decent to at ledge dashing. I just don't okay. love to do it in tournament because gotcha. <laughs> just don't like losing stocks. Totally understandable. Um, so laser needle and F tilt. Okay. So respawn. So respawn game way easier on the stage, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not easier in the sense that you'll hit her, but she like only has ledge. She can't shield on yeah. side plants and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but we get grabbed out of it, so let's see. So I think after you do this first laser, so your mindset with anvil is like you want to like attempt to trap her with your laser as you come down, right? Mm -hmm. So you're using the laser to impede her movement. So first of all, the laser just it isn't going low enough to do that. Yeah. Um, I guess if you're trying to prevent her from jumping, maybe shooting one above her jump height could be good. Uh, but Sheik's not re going to really want to be jumping, on FD at least. Yeah. On other stages, maybe this is good. Uh, so you're shooting the laser to impede her, and the general mix-up, maybe you've noticed this already, but people will do like the dash through, right? That's like the main yeah. way of dealing with um, with with, Fa with Falco. <laughs> if uh, if they don't want to stay on the ledge, because sometimes they don't want to be cornered, even if they're safe there uh, mm -hmm. for the invol. It's like after your invol runs out, they're still cornered. So some players will take the opportunity yeah. to like dash through. Uh, all the fast characters will do it. Um, so you want to? Yeah. I like doing up tilt to cover this, because you if you don't even turn around, you can see like if you had just stood still. You can like react yeah, to her moving yeah, yeah. forward, and if she keeps moving forward while you up tilt, it'll catch her on the back end. Yeah. So that's something you can do to zone her. You can also do like a dare in place, but that will waste more frames. So mm -hmm. it'll it'll be like easier to hit and a better punish. Actually, maybe not even a better punish. It'll be easier to hit because the hitbox is out. But uh, just th your mindset should be like, I want to zone her coming through me, or I want to attack her. So like the other option, if they're not dashing through, it's they're fainting a dash through and they're staying right here, right? So yeah, um, you want to be attacking in this area instead of doing a laser. Because uh, another thing to consider with the lasers, even if this was laser was lower, it's like all she has to do is like get inside you and the laser like doesn't reach. So right, because the laser comes out like in front of you. So if you see. Boom, this is the hitbox right here. But that means yep. if she's like uh, running through you when you're doing an approaching laser, it's very easy for her to get around this laser, basically. Yeah. Okay, and now we see another opportunity. So, so what, what should, yeah, shine grab. That's what I was getting yeah. at. <laughs> so, uh, probably not the best idea to tap, but you're in there, you get the shine, and you can see, like, this is why you feel. Her shield is like un impenetrable, right? Like if you mm -hmm. are never grabbing her shield, she's always just gonna wait for an attack and then do something. For sure. So you can see like you do a fade in dare this time. She's just reacting though. She's reactively shield grabbing. If you drift away with the dare, she's just gonna say, "Oh, I can't shield grab this one." And even if you like, let's say you trick her and you do the fade away dare, you bait the grab. I don't think you can really even get the punish if she does the grab right away, right? She almost has to do like a late bad shield grab. Mm -hmm. But if she's shield grabbing late, that means she's re reacting to your drift anyway. So the only yeah. the only shield grabs you're going to bait out are ones where they're doing it immediately after your dare start. So you're you're never going to be able to punish anyway. It'll be like, uh, so pretend you drifted away here. Let's see how quickly she does it. So this is first frame, actionable. So within like three frames, she's shield grabbing. So let's assume she didn't even react. You're probably not punishing, right? Right. So again, and if you had wave shined away, then you can react in time to punish because you're not in this dare end lag. You're, you're just in wave dash end lag. And then by the time this grab is ending, you're already actionable and could be moving. Yeah. Okay, so this is kind of similar to what you did at the beginning. Um, I really don't like that you're not wave shining out of that. 
Well, I guess mm -hmm. maybe you couldn't confirm that one. Let's see. Oh no, this is a tech place. So yeah, you should be, I would probably wave shine away to be safe. Um, but if you think you're gonna hit it, you can wave shine towards and go for a harder punish. That's just risk okay. reward. Um, I definitely don't think you should be short hopping. Uh, like at least this one, you drifted away. So if you are yeah. gonna do like these aerials on people at low percent, I would even back air just to be like extra safe. Back right. air or up air can generally be better. Uh, up air is a little flimsy sometimes, so I, so I prefer back air. Yeah. Uh, but even down air is fine as long as you drift away. So you can see like, you can almost think of it as like, okay, I hit her and now she's landing. So it's, just, does, do you recognize this situation from earlier? Mm -hmm. So you can see it's the same thing. All she has is this drop down fair. So, or double jump away. So she doesn't even go for it this time. Yeah. She might have got caught if she went for it. I'm not sure, but um, I, I don't like the up tilt either way. Cause I'm thinking like, okay. I want to dash chance and then like pressure the fair. Yeah. And if she doesn't do the fair, then it's fine. She's not attacking me. Um, but the up tilt's like hoping that your hitbox wins. Oof. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and we see a lot of double jumping coming out of mm -hmm. your neutral, so immediate double jump. I actually like immediate double jump for Sheiks that do this fair, but I feel like you're just doing it out of fear or like pure habit. Right. Um, if you if you do see them doing this, I think double jumping above can be pretty good because you can see how like it kind of beats it. Same similar to Fox, um, but it is risky. And if you're doing that double jump read, and they don't do the short hop that you want or the jump that you want. Um, then you have to transition into like West Balls mode, how we talked earlier, where with like your your you land have stuff. to do the double jump landing mix up where you're like coming down yeah. with aerial or wave lands. You you have to start being tricky then, and uh, if you're not tricky enough, then they might just grab you and suddenly you're getting tech chased because you double jumped to neutral. Mm -hmm. And you see this one like there's That's absolutely bad. no purpose um, because you had the control. So one thing to keep in mind for neutral. If you have the frame advantage to establish laser control, you almost always want to do that. Um, okay. Like, there, there can be exceptions. Maybe maybe almost always is uh, a bit exaggerated. Like, if you had just stood here and dash danced around this uh, mistech and, like, pressured her wake up, I think that'd be fine, too. But you definitely don't want to, want to be giving up the ground because you're, you're basically, like, putting yourself in a mix-up and this is probably something you're comfortable with. You're like, oh, I know if she does a get-up attack, my down air beats it. But you mm -hmm. could just stay on the ground and beat get-up attack, right? Yeah. Um, and this is, and, and you shouldn't feel bad about that. This is literally something I was doing for a long time. Um, mm -hmm. Because, like, a lot of people will get-up attack here, and then you down air and you feel great. You're like, now I'm getting this <laughs> sick punish, and it's because I right. double-jumped on the read. But if... Uh, what I what I started doing, I was just like, oh, well, let me just dash dance. If they do the get up attack, I'm still punishing them with the downer. It's literally the same punish. But if they're not doing the get up attack, I'm like, maybe they're doing regular get up like Sheik does here, and I'm punishing with like a late dare shine instead of a double jump up high. Like, look how early you did it. She could even yeah. just move out of the way and grab you. Um, so definitely, when you're looking for get up attacks, try and just stay grounded in a dash dance. And okay. then the other option would be like looking for a laser control. Um, if you don't have enough frame advantage to like necessarily pressure that, like maybe you're over here, just start lasering. And uh, okay. you want to keep her in the corner because that's generally where your opponents are going to be worse off is in the corner. Does everything make sense so far? I know I'm like yeah. doing a lot of different situations, but hopefully you can see yeah, no. like how they all are cohesive in the sense that like uh, your general matchup is like laser control, uh, build some damage, get her off stage, and then edge guard. Like build sure. build damage during the edge guard, and then convert the edge guard to a kill. And that's going to be your general formula for Sheik. Um, and then I guess uh, you could add in like sharking if you yep, pop I'll her shark. up and you can't push her off stage. So you're either sharking her or pushing her off stage, or sometimes both. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like your general layout of how you're playing the matchup. Okay, and you can see again, uh, this one, Swayzer could have power shield grabbed you. Um, yeah. 
Let's see, is there anything? Okay, so. So you fortunately got out, like, got, got out of that combo and you have stage control still. Um, I think this laser is understandable. Oh wait, did you not retreat with it? I think that's the problem. I was surprised you didn't retreat far enough. So like, I would dash jump. If you're gonna retreat with a laser, I totally think that's good. Yeah. But you need to dash jump right away. Okay. You, you did like a dash and then you jumped neutral. So, yeah. uh, do you understand why that would be worse? Yeah. Because like you're starting your laser like here, whereas if you start it here while you're moving still, um, you're leaving more space between you and Sheik, and she can't close this gap. Uh, because if yeah. you're doing the retreating laser, uh, your general... So it's like a uh, sacrifice, where like you're sacrificing stage uh, in exchange for a laser control, which is usually good for Valko, because you're like, okay, I'm giving up this mm -hmm. stage to get a laser out, but with that laser control, I can very easily regain the stage or even get a hit. Um, but if you're right. giving up the stage and then just trying to do a laser neutral, it's like you you didn't uh, take full use of that sacrifice because like yeah. you, you're just like wasting time basically. Okay, up throw, great great throw option. So one thing I like to do out of up throw is just wave dash uh, up tilt. You can just like dash wave dash under her. So this one would have been tricky because she smashed she had the lasers away. But if you do dash wave mm -hmm. dash and see that she did that, you can like maybe turn around and threaten back air instead. Um, but the key is to realize how vulnerable she is here. Another thing is just shoot another laser. Um, I call them laser nets, where you shoot a laser underneath that she's yeah. like yeah. is going to land into, right? She's landing into your net, your laser net, and then if you're close enough, you can convert that into a, an air. Or if you feel like you're too far away and maybe she'll fair in time or nair or double jump, you think she's going to be able to do something out of the blazer, then you just dash chance. And it's that same yeah. situation we talked about where like she's either coming down with fair or double jumping, especially on FD. Um, that's why I like how it simplifies everything. So boom. So, and instead you're double jumping. So maybe yeah. also keep in mind like if you notice yourself double jumping during punishes, and you're ending up above your opponent, that's a big no-no. So use that as an indication to remind yourself like, wait, how did I end up double jumping above my opponent? What did I do and what could I have done yeah. instead? So that's a big part of improvement is having, like when you notice something bad, uh, you have to, you, you don't want to just like depend on noticing things out of just like raw awareness. You want to have some cue. So like, yeah. Uh, a flag should sort of like go up in your mind when you're double jumping above someone because okay. that that's like been a thing we've seen five times now right so yeah. so now like you can even uh it, it's it might be hard while you're playing but if you're going through vods you can mm -hmm. literally just go through any random vod you have and only look for situations where you're double jumping above the opponent and i bet you'll find plenty because, yeah. like I said, this this habit will manifest in every matchup and everything you're doing. Okay. So yeah, not the best punish, and then she punishes your landing. Okay. Shouldn't be. I got crushed with dash attack there. But yeah, I was even saying. if she dash attacks, I think you get knocked down at 81. Okay. Like you wouldn't get launched, but you would land on the ground. Um, right. so and I guess I would just say like hard reading something this hard in neutral is just very rarely going to be worth it um, unless you yeah. have good reason like had you, have you seen her do a bunch of dash attacks in this situation like maybe right. maybe you have I actually wasn't keeping track like when you're coming down Not from right. down air if she's been da punishing every double jump down air with dash attack maybe you do want to like hold down and ground tech shine it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it wasn't even out of that. So it was during a tech roll. And I guess maybe you saw her dash attack there, so you thought she'd do it again. But yeah. honestly, you even have frame advantage out of this. Uh, not quite. Um, so yeah, it, it wasn't the worst idea looking back because of how little frames you had. Um, so, but I guess like 
once you see it not happen, I guess that's when you should be doing something. So like, yeah. you're expecting the dash attack. Um, this is a really powerful concept, um, but like having a plan B. So if you're ever reading something, you have to have like a, a window of time where you're like, okay, I'm reading this dash attack as, as like a tech chase. If she doesn't do it after a certain number of frames, I'm gonna resort to like roll away or I'm gonna full hop. Like you need to have a yeah. plan B because otherwise you're just like hard reading and you're just like stone commitment to this mm -hmm. one option. And just like, if she had just stood there, I think eventually you would have picked a plan B, right? But yeah. it would be better to have a, pr a read for a specific timing and then a plan B to fall back on in case she doesn't do what you expect. Because okay. if you're reading the dash attack at a certain timing and she doesn't do it, well now it's like, you, you don't really have time to reevaluate if she's still gonna do the dash attack. Like you, you just can't yeah. react. So that's why having a plan B is really powerful. And it could be something simple as, as simple as shielding, right? Like, oh, I think she's gonna dash attack, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go for a ground tech or crouch cancel. Wait, she didn't do it, let me shield instead. Or let me roll, yeah. like, or, or even attack. So it doesn't have to be only defensive. And then that way you're not just like eating a fair, because he was like, the, what, what actually happened here was Suezo knew he was late on the punish and didn't fall for the crouch cancel. But then yeah. like, uh, he's doing something similar to you where he's reading the, the spot dodge, right? I think that's what he's reading. Or okay. he, he's either reading spot dodge or he's like soft covering shield. So he's sort of covering those two options. So if you had picked those as a plan B, he actually would have outplayed you, but at least play the second mix up. So he's already, yeah. uh, he's ahead of you in the sense that he's playing the second mix up right away. He knew he wasn't getting the first one. Um, and, and I think your play was fine, but then you need to be playing the second mix up, right. which is hard. But if you just, um, uh, that, that one's hard because that's like a mental thing where like you have to make a decision um, but I guess just like default to something really easy. So like um, sh Shield is a really easy one, but it's also yeah. not the greatest option obviously because you just get grabbed or something. It happens a lot mm -hmm. um, Roll is like a little it's it's cheesier and like it feels newbier, but it's honestly pretty hard to cover a roll away here So you can yeah. imagine like oh, I'm gonna go for the crouch cancel and then as soon as you recognize it not working roll away and you don't want to do right. that to the point you develop it as a habit, but at least to get you playing the, the double layer mix up. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Severe lack of lasers here. So, he, he's at frame disadvantage. Like, you're already dashing towards him. Um, I think you're a little too far to threaten anything with this dash away. So that's why, I, like, immediately my brain says, like, are they within shuffle range? So like, uh, right here, right? You see them with the dash attack. You're not mm -hmm. within range to punish this. And not only are you not close enough to punish it, you're not even close enough to threaten them to the point where they might shield, right? Like you're just right. too far. So in my mind, this is an automatic laser. I'm lasering 100% okay. of the time because nothing else is gonna do anything for you. But the yeah. laser like lets you close space and like you can do like a full dash laser or just like a half approaching laser uh, where you like dash and then jump vertically in laser and put her in a laser mix up. That should be your goal. If you're not immediate. So like if you can't do an immediate aerial, she's not in any sort of mix up is, yeah. is the idea. And you always want to be putting her in mix ups and that's how Falco manipulates opponents. So if you watch Mango and you okay. feel like he's just like in the opponent's head really hard, it's mm -hmm. because he's setting up mix-up after mix-up. And he's like, he'll set up four mix-ups in a row and not really do anything with any of them. And the opponents are sort of like freaking out because they, they feel like they have to evade him for four mix-ups in a row. And then yeah. the fifth one, he catches them doing something dumb. Right. And then like, even after you pass the Sheik, like short hop pass, which is bad because you're going in the corner. <clears throat> and uh, so like, she does this jump, 
Um, it doesn't seem like you're reacting to jumps. Um, so yeah. maybe that's another thing to look at. Uh, whenever someone jumps, you should try to react. And then you could see, like, you could very easily laser. Maybe not even out of the short hop, but you landed. She still hasn't landed, so laser. Especially now, you're yeah. in the corner, right? So you want protection. You want to be able to fight your way out of the corner. And you want to do that with a laser mix-up. Okay. Okay. So you get a run-up shield on this back here. Or a walk-up shield. So this is another up throw. Uh, you could back throw here. Just um, something to consider. Yeah. Sometimes you can do like back throw. If she goes pretty high, since she's at 70, you can do back throw into like laser F tilt and push her off stage. You can okay. back throw immediately, turn back around, and then back air. Um, just pushing her in the corner is never like a terrible option, but I think up throw is fine mm -hmm. here. Uh, again, look for like dash, wave dash, up tilt, still good. Dash, wave dash, and then like, or dash under and then just like back airing. Uh, again, yeah. like consider which way she's facing. So while back air does have good range, um, let's look at this back air. Does she do one here? So you can see how it, it angles upwards, which means mm -hmm. if, she, if this back air was up high in the air, and you're back airing to the left, it beats it at this angle. Like, yeah. you'll, you'll basically never lose that. Um, so you can see she gets hit. Uh, she's facing to the right. So if you dash past her, her back air is going at like this, like a Marth Nair almost. So if you dash full hop here and back air uh, perpendicular, then it's very hard for her to hit you with anything. Mm -hmm. um, so consider that as like an easier way to shark her. And okay. and there's a lot of things like this uh, when you're sharking, like limitations of her hitboxes that you need to know. Um, same yeah. with like, if you're gonna up tilt, like you would wanna do the same thing, like maybe yeah. hedge your bets and go to the left a little more. Okay, so you get the up air, that's good. Yeah, I think that's fine. I mean, the back air's probably better, but it's whatever. If she goes straight yeah. up from this up air, then it's actually really good. But the back air would send her off further. That's why I prefer that. Oh, mm. so what did you do there? Okay. Did you see? Wait, let me, let me watch it again. What, what do you think you should do here? Right here, uh... I mean, probably just either... I mean, either I could try and pressure the shield with, like, shine grab. Okay, well, just so... Around. Let me go back. So this is like the laser mix-up we talked about. You lasered her out of the air, and now she's coming down. So what are you trying to avoid here, first of all? Fair. Right, so that's all she has is the drop down fair. So mm -hmm. what are some options you could use to anti-air her before she even lands, if you have time? Uh, up to, like turn around up tilt, probably. Mm -hmm. You're a little far for up tilt. Or, yeah. So let, let's say I, like I you guess... didn't have time to get under her, but you're right here. Yeah. Really, I just think laser. Try and catch her. Yep, the laser through. net into like F tilt. That's really good. Yeah. Um, if you have time, you can like turn around and then back air. Because uh, even a trade, it's like, mm, well, maybe not at this percent. But if she, if the bear would kill, like, you could look for bear yeah. because you have all the stage to recover. You would be fine, uh, even mm -hmm. if it trades with a fair. Um, the the wave dash wave dash under with up tilt uh, could be okay but once she's in the corner like this especially at this percent you're more looking to send her off than you are to send her up sending her up kind of just puts you in yeah. the same scenario because i'd rather have a chic off stage at 70 than up above me at 150 which sounds yeah. weird but it's like once she's off stage the the percent and kill is almost inevitable if she's above right. me i have to like win a mix-up and if she gets down to the ground well it's anyone's game so mm -hmm. i think the best call in this scenario would be especially like given your spacing, I would do a, a laser like kind of lower. So like if you do a yeah. high laser, she can actually like, it, it's hard to hit her out of that. But if you do a lower yeah. laser, uh, where it can like true combo into F tilt, that's like the best way to do it. Okay. Um, this was okay, because you're at least pressuring her landing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but that's that was the mistake there. Did you see it that time? Yeah. Yeah, just narrowing into the corner. Uh -huh. So. Let's rewind a bit to the actual laser mix-up. So you're getting the laser mix-up here. This is beautiful. 
And uh, what are you threatening here as the Falco? What does Sheik need to I respect? Mean, she, there's a bunch grab. of options. So run up grab. Grab is grab. Yeah. You're a little far for uh, run up grab, but it's definitely something you could do. What else I do you have? I guess like a late aerial shine on mm -hmm. the shield. Shuffle's really scary for her, right? She, if she gets yeah. hit trying to challenge it, like let's say she lands yeah, and tries yeah. to F tilt, or like she's even dealing with the laser. So maybe she tries to like jump out of shield after the laser and you're narrowing in, well, she's dead, basically. Mm -hmm. um, let me think, what else? I, I guess the only other thing would be like just dash dancing and or shooting yeah. another laser. So just staying there. Uh, that means she's gonna be afraid to like YOLO shield grab at you coming in, uh, narrow out shield. She can't like do any defensive zoning options because if you just dash dance, you can just react and punish and she's gonna be yeah. getting sent off stage. So, uh, Sheiks are gonna like play pretty conservative here usually, and you can see she does indeed. And she's basically just holding shield, saying, uh, "I mean, you could run up grab, like I said, because you are reading her playing conservative. It's not a terrible idea." Um, yeah. But like her her mindset, especially at this point in the game, is I'm just gonna shield and hope he does something bad. And mm. it's unfortunately a very effective strategy because. It's hard for Falco to do good stuff. Like most Falcos don't see this as a distinct mix-up, so they're just like yeah. trying to get the aerial. But you have to consider like why would Sheik challenge here when she's in such a bad position? She's not going to. And even right. if you did like the latest, like the sexiest late nair shine I've ever seen, uh, like it's rarely going to beat buffer roll in. So like yeah. either after the nair or after the shine, she could buffer roll in. And it's going to be really hard for you to chase that. So the aerial in general is just not going to be that good for you here. And it's going to be tempting because you're going to see opponents shielding in the corner. This happens a lot, especially for Smarth. You like, you're like, oh, I can just nair him. He's just shielding yeah. in the corner. But you're yeah. not getting anything off of it. Um, the one exception would be is like if you're doing late nair shine grab, um, that can be okay. But that still means you have yeah, to like play was, the mix up. So I was playing a Falco earlier today. He was messing me up with uh, late aerial shine grab. Right. So I would say if you're getting hit by that, try roll in. Uh, and yeah. similarly, <laughs> like so, if you watch high level like Mango Zane, you might see Mango mm -hmm. do like late aerial, and then he just immediately reads the roll. That's because they're like yeah. on that high level of a mix up. Right. Um, but you have to be aware of your opponent's skill level. So like. I'm not, or not even saying like Suezo is low skill level. He's not respecting your Nair Shine grab enough. Maybe if you did it 20 times to him, he's going to start uh, rolling in, mm -hmm. right? But otherwise, he's just going to wait for a mistake. Um, or and, and like shield grabbing. So like if he's respecting your aerial enough that he'll never shield grab it, then maybe you can do the late Nair and then read the roll, right? Because th then it would be safe. The shield grab's the yeah. only thing that's going to hit you. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So, like, just the general idea of not narrowing into the corner. Right. Is the moral of the story. <laughs> okay. Did you see what you got hit by? The... Wait, no. <laughs> okay. Does this look familiar? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what do you think Sheik's going to do here? I mean, fair. Yep, or... chop down fair. <laughs> And you had the right idea of like going for a laser. I just think you weren't like super prepared to do it as a counter to this. Yeah. So hopefully when you think of it as like a net, that's why like I, I like to name stuff because it helps me visualize and think of it. Yeah. Um, so you can think, oh, Sheik's dropping down, laser net. Um, mm -hmm. And like spacing around the sphere. So the other option would be like, if you don't do the laser net, you could just dash chance outside of the range. And now she's like, do I have to shield or not? I'm not sure if this Falco will nair right away. Yeah, and you can see she shielded and then we dashed back immediately because she realized she got the hit. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the needles suck, but maybe in the context of everything we've seen, maybe not as consequential as you thought, right? Yeah. Like, how many times have you gotten hit by a full stack of needle in these two games? Literally once. This is the first time. Right. How many times did you get hit by drop down fair? Like seven yeah. or eight. So. Yeah. Oh no! What did you do? <laughs> Double jump. <laughs> double jump. Mm -hmm. And where where did you double jump? Look where you are. <laughs> in, yeah, double jumped in the corner. So what what would what would have been a better idea here, or what what can you recognize about the situation? 
Obviously, I mean, you're far away, which means what? Yeah, laser. Laser. It means you can laser. Doesn't mean you have yeah. to. But I think at this range, I mean, like, if you approach in laser and she continues to run forward, she could, like, power shield grab you. So, like, even, even like, uh, approaching laser isn't, like, a guaranteed good option. But you could at least, like, close a little bit of space with the half approaching laser in laser mm -hmm. uh, and, and get that control. And then, again, like, your idea is to fight your way out of the corner because she yeah. has the control if you just, if you do this. Because she doesn't have to interact with this at all, right? Do you see how she could, literally, if she wanted, she could just stay over here and keep charging needles or do whatever. Yeah. And, like, it worked because Suezo has a bad habit of going for this fair for no real reason. Um, but yeah. better sheiks will not just, they'll, they'll react to the double jump and just stay on the ground and you'll be toast. Mm -hmm. Or you'll be forced to, like, play that mix-up. Like, maybe you do this double jump and wave land back. Maybe. But you're, you're gambling a lot. Oh, that's the second time you jab. Um, definitely don't want to be. I mean, she's at one thirty, so I guess it's more understandable. I think the yeah. the jab. I guess the problem I have with it is it's kind of reactable the same way a fade fade away aerial is. Okay. So, it, just imagine you're chic and you know the Falco is going to give you a, an opening to escape, right? A reactable opening. So if you see Falco start jabbing, you're just thinking, oh, I'll just roll away. Because Falco is not going to single hit jab, read a roll over here. Right. That's just one example. She might just like nair out a shield and just power through your jabs, like in between them. Um, and sure enough, that's what she does. Okay. So you can see that time it works. I mean, yeah. that's why it's not like a terrible idea to jab. Um, I would prefer grabbing here. Okay. Because you, again, like. You have to consider your opponent's mindset. She's at 130, she doesn't want to get hit. Because if she gets hit off, she's one edge guard from death. So if you did Nair Shine Grab here, well, that's probably gonna work. And maybe she still yeah. does the roll or whatever, right? But what is she doing? She's rolling into the corner, giving you frame advantage to laser again. And then you're just, so that's what I mean when I say like, uh, Mango and Ginger will put their opponents in the same mix up, or not the same mix up, they'll put them in laser mix ups over and over. Yeah, and this is how that kind of stuff happens. Where like you're going for the shine grab, they roll in, and then you establish the laser control again, and they're like, "Fuck, I'm getting lasered by Falco in the corner." Uh, maybe they're like trying to do wave dash forward stuff, and it's like they have to play right. this mix-up because they're getting cornered, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why shine grab is so powerful. You f start forcing those kind of escapes, and even if she rolled behind you there, like you're still you still have frame advantage, even though she's in a better spot, because uh, now you're like. Right. A roll in like you're threatening an aerial too so she doesn't know if you're gonna use your frame advantage to attack or to start a laser or what so it's not even like much better so like not not terrible not i'm not telling you to like never laser jab um especially yeah. at knockdown percents and like that time you she was facing the other way oh well, i guess she was both times but uh when people are facing away Laser job is definitely more acceptable. Right. Okay, so this was pretty good, right? You saw she did the fair. Pretty good evasiveness. You do mm -hmm. the laser. So this laser is great, even though it's not hitting. This is like a reminder. So again, going back to the cues, this is a cue to react to what your opponent's doing. Cause like, as you're shooting this laser, you're not doing anything else. You're committed to this laser for like 20 frames. So in those 20 yeah. frames, use that time to say, okay, what's my opponent doing? Oh, she's way the fuck up here. I'm gonna need to shoot another laser as a laser net, or I'm gonna wanna sneak under an anti-air to sharker, or I'm gonna wanna like whiff punish or dash chance around her landing, right? Yeah. Those are like your ideas. So you're outside fair range, you're doing another laser. This is beautiful. Boom. What could you do here? You know she's landing into this laser. It's literally unavoidable and it's reactable that she's landing. What should you be doing? Shuffle. Yeah, so you can shuffle there. I think she has time to get shield up. It's the problem. Okay. Um that's that's a very common option that Falcos go for. I was sort of yeah. tricked you with that. Um okay, okay. I would go for grab here. So yeah. even though she's at zero, like 
if you're back throwing her into the corner, like now she the next mix-up she's playing, she's gonna get a huge combo if she gets hit. Uh, alternatively, you could dash dance. Maybe she does take laser F tilt uh, instead of shield. Yeah. Um, so a, a big part of like these laser mix-ups is the timing mix-up portion of it. So if she ever has yeah. time to like take laser F tilt, take laser shield, because you know that she's taking the laser. So is she going to shield? Is she going to F tilt? Is she going to roll? Is she going to dash attack at you? Maybe aggressively. She might do that if she like reads you dash dancing, but that's pretty uncommon. Most people, when you laser them, they're going to choose a defensive option, and it's your job to play around those defensive defensive options. And you, while you're doing that, you want to consider that you're at more risk than Sheik almost all the time because her punishes are always going to be stronger against you than vice versa. So yeah. if you do this laser into approaching aerial and you get F-tilted, that could be your stock. If you do laser into approaching dare, you get a dare shine, what, like sharking opportunity. And that's on FD. Yeah. That's, this is like your best place for punishes. If you get laser, dare. So you won the mix-up, you get the dare shine, and then she's almost certainly going to DI. Let's say she doesn't even DI. You full hop up air, and then you're sharking. That's not nearly right. comparable to like a chic tech chase if she hits the F tilt. Yeah. So always keep that in mind. That's why I like okay. dash dancing. Um, this is a good homework assignment I'll, I'll give to you. Um, so it'll just be to just laser dash dance and just watch, just observe your opponent. You don't even have to worry about whiff punishing. Just go into unranked, pick a random chic or any character really, laser and then dash dance and see what they do. See what options okay. they're throwing out. Do they ever take laser attack you? And what you'll find is almost never. Now, the better okay. players will, like especially as Fox. Fox players might. Yeah. Um, Marth players might do like take laser F, F smash, but um, depending on the character, it can be very unlikely. And what that will do is like, instead of feeling like you have to attack right away, you'll think, okay, I could just chill here for a minute do some threatening movement and see what they do and whiff punish instead of trying to just go right in. So you do dash attack, which isn't going to land you much. Uh, yeah. Kind of lucky you didn't get CC'd. Uh, even if you did aerial, though, I think like it's hard to convert the shine. Like If you're doing an early dare, uh, it's hard to do early dare into shine. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's just another reason I like grab. Grab's like it's gonna be pretty standard, and uh, you're you're likely to get at least some opportunity with low risk. Ooh, another power shield. Okay, so you can see how much she's relying on fair. This is because she yeah, can't really sure. approach. She's running at you as far as she can until she sees a laser. Then she's full hopping. Most sheiks will not full hop. Um, so. De again, well, I guess that time you reacted, but you tried to challenge it with fair. But you can see how yeah. just reacting and then doing this uh, mix-up you just did a second ago, it's the same situation. But this time yeah. you're challenging with a fair instead of last time, which you got a perfectly good laser mix-up. So maybe you felt yeah. like you, the laser mix-ups weren't yielding you anything, but now you have some better options to deal with that. Okay, and then did you see what happened there? Yeah. What would happen? You got power shielded. I, what did you do? Yep. And then I just shielded. Yeah, panic just shield. So. And then shield, yeah. We see it again. And you could see, like, she's not threatening you, right? You could see how if you just had started dash dancing, you would see, oh, yep. here comes the telegraph fair she's been doing all game. Mm -hmm. And you know how to deal with it. You're going to be doing the laser. You're going to be dash dance threatening a shuffle or uh, grab. Grab. So you know the options now, and then you just need to recognize the power shield laser isn't th uh, the real threat. A bit of panic in there. Okay, so this is the second time she's missed a tech chase, and you didn't realize you had frame advantage. Now this one's kind of hard because yeah. like she really just flubbed the the edge the tech chase. She should have just hit you. Or at least mm -hmm. come close. So it's understandable you shielded, but like maybe just pay attention more, because if you can not shield here, 
Um, or even just like react to the fact that she came up short and when you're shielding, wave dash back instead or something. But you kind of just yeah. froze again. Maybe you thought she would do something. Because now she's just gonna fare again. Yeah. And then you went for up till here. Wouldn't advise this as a zoning move at low percent. Yeah. So it was hard to see, but you did up tilt. Um, one mm -hmm. thing I like to do is I'll dash back and then do like a backflip down air. That's really good at going mm -hmm. over boost grab and dash attack. And yeah. it's also way better than up tilt or a backflip back air because you're getting a huge juicy punish uh, at these low percents. So do you know what I mean by uh -oh. backflip down air? Yes. Okay, it's, it's kind of like the Lord stomp or like the stomp that Wizzy does where he does dash back and then he short hops towards them and stomps. Yeah. It's like the same idea behind that, yeah. where like the back of the downer actually has a really good hitbox. And the backflip makes your hurtbox uh, avoid most attacks. So right. it, it even works for like Marth dash attack. It, it goes over a lot of things. Or like Fox shuffle. If a fox is shuffling okay. here, you can dash out of the way, backflip back into the same position, but with the downer. So it's a really good counterattack. Oof. Spot dodge habit. Mm -hmm. It was a weird situation because it was out of a jab reset. Okay. I think you were a little slow on that too. So you side B. One, two, three, four. Okay, not too bad. Yeah, and so like what... Because if I like think about it, mm -hmm. I always think my like three ledge options would be side B from ledge, double laser, or ledge dash. dash. Yeah. There's a and fourth. Like, There's a like, fourth that's pretty important, which is ledge stall. Um, okay. Maybe not so much yeah. for Sheik, because needles could actually just kill you. But if yeah. she's on the ground, like if she's up here, I wouldn't ledge stall. Because there's no need okay. to. Um, I mean, you didn't... She wasn't up there when you... Well, let's see, where, where was she when you had to make your decision? Right, so you're side being into the stage. Um, so, like, I think ledge hop side B is a reasonable choice. Um, it's just rough because she can... She is good at covering ledge hop double laser, obviously. Right. And, uh, and you don't have platforms to deal with. So... Yeah, I think this is actually just a situation where ledge dash is the best because it's the most flexible. Like, you can yeah. ledge dash into attack or shield or dash away or dash through. Um, that's why mm -hmm. I like to default to ledge dash. But I, I think your decision was honestly fine. He just read it. So you yeah. can't beat yourself up too much. And he didn't even read it, like, good enough. Like, he read it with a jump. Right. Uh, try to hit this text, though. Yeah, for sure. It's a... Uh, and you're recovering, like, like when you're on the defense, um, it's like kind of weird to think about. When you're in situations where you can't do anything else, uh, you want to like prioritize reacting to your opponent and then also teching. Like they kind of go hand in hand. If you're reacting to this when you're doing the side B, I feel like you would naturally tech. But it seemed like yeah. you were kind of surprised because you didn't get land right away. Oh no! <laughs> Did you see <laughs> the doubles yep. up out of the corner? And this is, uh -huh. so on Yoshi's you were doing it from the side plat, and on FD you're doing it from the corner. And what what could you have done instead? Because it's easy to like make fun of your double jump. But uh, yeah, like I this is where the positioning is. So first of all, yeah. like not threatening anything, you get a guaranteed laser at this range. Yep. Okay, but let's say you shielded because you didn't react to the range properly, and now she's here. She actually even jumped pretty early. Okay, so yeah, let's okay. say you're the, in this situation and you think she's going to keep chasing you. So what what is your mindset of, like, options? Uh, I mean, laser, just naturally, shield, and I guess, honestly, just, like, go to ledge would feel not that bad to me. Yeah, I wouldn't advise ledge, because I think, okay. uh, especially at, at this percent, if she were closer, yeah, I'd say, true. maybe... Like, if she were closer closer, closer where she could stuff you with F-Tilt and Fair, and, like, she was already in your face, I would definitely advise, like, Light Shield and just get knocked to ledge. Um, yeah. But I, th I think at this range, like, even with the sh short hop, she's, like, not really threatening you. 
So I would prefer to play. I'd rather go for a dash wave dash under and try to up tilt her, and like okay. I'd rather risk my stock that way than go to ledge and like now I'm risking my stock coming off the ledge while she's prepared. It, right, instead of risking attacking. Yeah, like you're gonna have to at some point uh, interact with this sheik when you're at 124. So like yeah, um, a, a habit I notice a lot of players doing is. When they're at high percents like that, they default to retreating because they want to be safe. But if it's a mm -hmm. if it's a situation or like a positioning setup where you have to react or you have to interact eventually, you you often want to like interact sooner rather than later because yeah. it, you usually have better options center stage. So like once you're on ledge, it's like well she knows you're not dashing back. If you're here, you could right. at least like dash dance on the sliver, right? Like, mm -hmm. or maybe like do a backflip back air just to like hit her. Um, so you have some stuff. Maybe like laser on the very edge. Um, right. And then all of that is a mix up for like the roll in and the dash under, um, or even like dash full hop aerial, just to like try and yolo your way out of the corner. I mean, at 19, mm -hmm. it's not really gonna work. But maybe if she were at 40. <laughs> Um, yeah. Maybe you beat her to the punch with, because like, look at how late she's doing her fair, right? She's doing it to auto cancel, so she's starting yeah. here. It's hitting like here. So if you had, instead of doing this double jump, do a rising full hop and like, yolo your way through her with a full hop back air, and then yeah. you can like land with a laser or something. At least you have like a fighting chance with that. With this, even if you hit the, the there, you're at frame disadvantage. Like you're you're lucky you didn't hit her honestly. And she still punished you. Right. Okay. I don't know if that was an accident, but again, another dash attack at low percent. This isn't never going to yield you anything, even if it hits. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think dash attack can be good sometimes, but only if it's at least knocking down. Cause, yeah. And even knocking down, like you have to worry about ground tech in place. Like they just ground tech it and grab you. Or down smash. Mm -hmm. uh, they they might even like do it by accident. I'm not saying they're predicting the dash attack or anything, but if people are just holding down and shielding these days, so it'll just happen. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> Another double jump. Yeah. yeah, and you can see like you do this up tilt because you you reacted to this, you get hit. So I, maybe you're worried about like immediate grab. Um, yeah. I, so, what would have been better instead? Like, let's say you were right. She's gonna do the immediate crab. What should you punish that with? Or how uh, could you avoid it? Because there's two different things. I, you could either stuff it or avoid it. Yeah, I would just think like short hop there. Yeah. To stop it. I think the short hop, the backflip there that I just talked about yep. is really good for that. Because you're right at the edge of her range. That's when it's good. Um, yep. You could also dash further into the corner and like see if she whiffs and then maybe like uh, that would let you play more reactively so you could dash dance into the corner if she whiffs you grab it and like toss her off stage and if she doesn't do it then you're just dash dancing here and then maybe you down air your way out of the corner or laser yeah. um, whereas like if you do the backflip down air that's like more of a read where if she waits for the backflip down air like she doesn't do the boost grab and you do the backflip down air you might get punished for that but I think mm -hmm. the the risk reward is generally worth it um and it's still like pretty hard to whiff punish because you can drift it um or yeah. you can also do the backflip and then react to the fact that she didn't move forward and then double jump instead yeah or like wave land yeah. you don't you don't have to do the aerial right. if you can react in time uh let me see what else could you do did you shield i don't remember now uh, uh yeah i think i started my you, shield. you can uh wave dash forward shine to just like it's it's a pretty raw option that yeah. like you might just run into something but at least you have like some possible upside with that uh that's mm -hmm. really good versus fox foxes will like to stay right here so if you wave dash forward china uh not only okay. do you get a huge punish but uh if you whiff the shine it's generally pretty safe like wave dash forward shine and then you wave dash wave dash out either way and start moving again it, yeah. it's hard for them to whiff punish and then grand total of two needle sacks that you got hit by. That's another reason not to do the double jump, actually. Yeah. Funnily, funnily enough, uh, 
it's, it's going to be really hard to avoid needles if you're double jumping. I mean, it's impossible. You have to, like, shine or air dodge, right? Mm hmm Okay, and more jabs at low percent, even worse than before. Yeah. At least before you were, like, threatening to pop up. Okay. So, you can see, this is, like, same down air. It's just as bad. Like, just because just cause it worked doesn't mean it's, like, any yeah. better. But you can see, like, this is what it beats. It beats them hard reading... Or like not hard reading. It beats them doing the short hop zoning aerial. This could have been a forward yeah. air as well. So if you see them doing this, feel free to double jump above them and punish. Um, but mm -hmm. even at twenty seven, like you're you're not getting the punish anyway, right? Because it's not knocking down. Yeah. This is still good. You could like dash chance here. Uh, you could do immediate crab. Um, right. So you F smash. You I got lucky. The F smash is just out of <laughs> desperation. <laughs> But you can see there's nothing to be desperate about, right? Like, you literally had stage control and she's shielding. I, yeah, I, mean, I just mean, like, being down blue stocks. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, that does yeah. make sense. Yeah, I mean, this is, like, a hard mental shift to make. But um, I actually wanted to make a, like, YouTube video talking about this. But if you watch, like, the best players, they never just say, like, fuck it, I'm gambling it all on this one interaction. And yeah. I thought for a long time, I was like, I used to play like that. Because I'd be down one socks to four. I'm like, I literally need this back throw down air cheese or something, right? For Sheik. Right. Like, I'll back throw her off and just go, I need the down air. It, it just, like, it. I, I don't want to say it never works, but, like, the degree to which it rarely works is, like, so bad that you're actually better off just playing a proper game. And I feel like you're more likely to beat Suezo in this situation you're more likely to beat him by like just start starting to play properly than you are to yep. cheese him three times or whatever. Yeah. And like you can see the F smash it's not even killing. So <laughs> you took a huge risk that wasn't even like a, a guaranteed kill. And I also think it's just like a bad mindset to be in where like it's just like, okay, well I'm down a couple stocks. Time to YOLO. More, yeah, more double jumps, sure. by the way. <laughs> oh, where's the shine grab? You can see if this is a, <laughs> if this is a shine grab. Oh, juicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, she's going to get grabbed doing this. Sometimes yep. she can jump squat under your grab, but it's pretty rare. So I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, grab that ledge. Oh, you couldn't really, but that was perfect. Nice. Invol strat? Oh, she spawns on the wrong side, so you don't need an invol strat. <laughs> yeah. I hate FD for that reason. Okay. So, again, hesitating. But I. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought you were going to stall, but no, you just do it right away. So you can see how long you're, like, hanging on it for, right? Mm -hmm. It's, like, 10 frames, and then you're, like, dropping down for like five frames and then double jumping so you're wasting quite a bit of time here yeah and i don't think you really tried ledge dash in this game i understand it's no, scary no, no, no. when she's doing this but even just ledge dashing into shield at least you get like the roll in mix up right yeah like she can't cover everything if you ledge dash and shield she can't like grab you here and also cover roll in so mm -hmm. that's like at least a 50-50, whereas this is like more reactable. Like you see she whiffed the ledge hop double laser punish and still got you. Yeah. And that's just because Sheik's fast. So I know we covered a lot. Do you have any questions about anything we went over or anything I didn't touch on that you had a specific question about? Um, I guess like if they're like in the air mm -hmm. like me, and they needle like i i get hit by okay know, so like they're doing the diagonal needles yep and then into grab a lot Just right so well are you getting hit by the needles either way like if i shield the needles they just grab my shield then well you could and just move out of the way okay. um and, and unless you like so like even if you're shielding the needles i think you can like always shield grab or it's like a you're I think the needles are plus zero on shield, so like yeah. poor priority literally wins. 
Um, not that I would advise you doing that. You could do, right. if you shield the needles up close, you could roll away. Um, I mean, obviously you don't want to be in that situation, but uh, if you have to be, then shield grab while like ACDing down in case she jabs or tilts. Mm -hmm. You can do that, or you can roll away. Um, in general, though, I'd say you shouldn't be near her that when she's because like if you think about the spacing how we talked about like you should be re respecting her fair range yeah so if you're respecting her fair range there's no way she should be able to needle grab you yeah that's sort of like my mindset about it now if sense. she's on side plats i get it a little more because if you're bottom mid and she's on side plat you feel like you have to give up a lot of stage yeah um that's where it can be tricky uh, you just have to like evaluate whether she is um, like if you're close enough to go under the needles and attack, or if you have to back off and respect the needles. I think typically you'll have to back off and respect them, yeah. but it, occasionally you'll be able to sneak under while they do them and just like jump shine from below, and they get punished really hard for that. And like if you yeah. back off to like like Ginger calls it off center if you're like uh like under the inner edge of the side plat on the opposite side. Yeah. You if you back up to there, it's not like she can make use of that. Like she has to drop down to the middle in order to take advantage of her space that she just made you give up. But you're giving up that stage with laser. That's yeah. like the general ideas. You're giving up that stage. Well, she's either going to like fall into your lasers that you're shooting or she's going to like go across top plat in which clay in which case as soon as you see her do that you you can move back underneath her yeah right so it's kind of like you're rotating along with her until mm -hmm. there's a point where she does she like slips up and you can take advantage or you can mm -hmm. also like uh one thing i've been experimenting with recently is uh like most falcos will like double jump up to shoot the sheik and then she gets bottom mid right yeah but what you can do is like short hop up and then like just fast fall right away without lasering or like fast fall laser on your way down and that can like catch them off guard because they think they have time to like run off the side plat and get center stage but if you don't actually do the double lasers and instead just like falling single laser maybe hitting them on the way down then you can get back down to bottom mid and uh, you kind of like trick them into going to the ground with you. Yeah. So you can do a lot of feints. Um, don't underestimate how tricky you can be just in like your movement. Like okay. it, it can feel like they just are shooting impenetrable needles, but every time you dash towards them or you're like dash dancing near them, they're scared of getting hit every time they needle or they should be right. if you're like, if you're actually threatening it properly. So, um, does, were there any other like needle-based questions? I know that's like kind of no, hard I, to visualize, I, I but so. okay. Uh, let me just think. Yeah, I mean, I think we covered most of the important stuff for Sheik. Mm -hmm. There is some stuff. I mean, it's unfortunate we didn't get to see like more laser mix-ups because I feel like you weren't yeah. really establishing the laser control. But if you have a situation come up, like maybe start. You, you go into some games and you get some lasers on a Sheik's shield and you need more clarification, you can always just send a screenshot. I think it's really good. Right. You can just send a screenshot yeah. to me and I can literally just break down the options for you again. And yeah. like, uh, like maybe you forget like, oh, right, I forgot I could uh, laser F tilt her shield at when she's at high percent, something like that. Because mm -hmm. um, there's almost always something good you can do to like challenge her shield or like it, anytime you laser, you can, you can play a good mix up. Yeah, for sure. Okay, well, um, if you don't have anything else, I will bid you a good night. All right. I'm and uh, I'm going to write a few notes real quick and I'll send them to you. Just like stuff you can work on as homework. I like to send okay. stuff that is actionable that you can actually like immediately go into games and practice. And yeah. it'll, it'll just be based around the stuff where you went over though. All right. All right, man. Talk to you later. Yeah, see ya. Thank Bye. you.